Okay, hi everyone. I'm Charlotte Jaden, the AmeriCorps CTEP at Rondo Community Library. Uh, welcome to our project, Words to Live By. This was worked on by myself and three other AmeriCorps members, Brian Young with Project for Pride and Living, Norma Savadera with PCs for People, and Virginia Lopez Nadal for Project for Pride and Living. And Brian will go into the further information. Thank you, Charlotte. Um, hi, everyone. Again, my name is um, Brian Young. I'm one of the CTEP AmeriCorps members at Project for Pride in Living in the Resident Services area. Um, so our original project idea was sort of bridging a couple different things. We wanted to sort of bring together digital skills education, specifically in sort of media, um, also with some aspects of community building and personal reflection. So our idea had sort of been to work with maybe three to four different partner organizations throughout the Twin Cities, including PPL, um, as well as some other groups, to do a couple workshops, maybe three to four over the course of the late spring, early summer, where we teach people how to use very accessible, readily available, and no cost um, media programs to create some sort of work of art. So that would probably be written, audio, or visual, some sort of piece that would be based around some kind of prompt that we created. So some of these would include prompts around what you envision the world looking like in the future, um, what challenges you see in your community, or things like what do hope and peace you know, sort of look like to you. And then ultimately, all of those would be hosted in a digital gallery online. Um, just on a website for the public to view. And then obviously we had to switch that up a little bit. So I'll let Charlotte talk about that. Um, thank you, Brian. So yes, due to the pandemic, COVID-19, we had to figure out a way to adapt our idea. Um, we decided to, we still wanted to keep the projects and it available for participants to upload to the Google Drive. Um, and to an online platform. Um, instead of having in-person tutorials and classes, we created online um, meeting platforms for participants to join if they had any questions regarding how to participate in the project or if they needed assistance with using the online media platforms. Um, we also decided to schedule another virtual interview for with our virtual meetup with our um, one of our uh, company companies that we collaborated with and that was just to make sure that like we are on the same page as them and that they if they had any other questions hi I'm Virginia Lopez Nadal I am at project for pride and living specifically the Career Center so talking about what our project ended up looking like, we had a public Google Drive and these housed our workshops. So we had the visual, written, and audio. And what that looked like on the drive was that each of them had their own Google Doc and on there we could have written and visual components that participants could go through to follow to create their art pieces. And um, keeping with the original idea, we did have a gallery. So we had a gallery folder and once participants filled, uh, finished a workshop, they could submit their art piece to that gallery so that people in the public could view them. Uh, and that was our way of kind of still having community, even though we were all working apart, that along with uh, the virtual kind of meetings that participants could join to have if they had questions so they can get them answered. Uh, and so yeah, the public Google Drive, we uh, had a URL and we put it on a poster and that poster we shared out and that's how we kind of got people to come to the Google Drive. So I'll share more about the Google Drive and the navigating Google Drive. So as one of our tutorials, um, I created a navigating Google Drive and this was to assist participants who weren't familiar with using Google Drive um, as well as um, maybe other um, media platforms. So the navigating Google Drive has 
um, exactly what Google Drive is and then I go through and take photos of how to find the tutorials and how to find the gallery and the workshop curricula. Um, and this what the navigating Google Drive was one of the first pages on the Google Drive so that it was easily easily accessible for participants. Yes, so um, this is, we should acknowledge this slide is for the section of this project that was created by Norma Saavedra, the PCs for People member, who unfortunately isn't able to join us. Um, but just acknowledging that this is all of her work that you're seeing right here. So Norma created the sort of written, com um, written virtual workshop that we had, um, which was using Google Docs. Um, since it, again, is, meets some of our criteria for being free, being quite accessible, you just need a Gmail account and you know, the, the technology to access it, whether that's your phone, a computer, a tablet, whatever that may be. And so these images on the left side and the upper right hand side, these are direct images from the workshop curricula that Norma created, curriculum, excuse me, that Norma created. Um, including just some information about how to use Google Docs and, and how to um, get a little fun and funky with it too. And then down at the bottom right, um, we each sort of added a section into our curriculum about sort of the importance of this, this art form. So for her, it was sort of the importance of the written art form and, and what it offers in terms of creative expression. And so this is just a, um, an image from, I think, a spoken word piece that she included in there. Um, and Google Docs also seemed like a great option to go with because it didn't only apply to our project, to art creation, but also to school, to work, to other, other settings where people could really use the skills they learned in this program. All right, so the visual workshop was my workshop. And so I set the stage by offering um, some benefits of creating art along with a TED talk about art therapy and then kind of gave them the assignment of creating an art piece using Canva which I'll talk about in a minute um, and then just had the prompts there because the prompts were what they would reflect on to then make their art piece. So uh, that's a little screenshot of my uh, Google Doc. Basically I had a Google Doc that had different topics and then I would write out uh, uh, like instructions for that section along with uh, visuals like screenshots from Canva. And Canva itself, I didn't mention, is a graphic design platform that's online. It's free. They do have like a, a pro membership, but for the most part, it's free. Um, and along with the written instructions and visuals, I also made videos, as you can see. So the topics ranged from know first creating your account to then working with text working with objects um, changing colors so basically just teaching the participants the tools so that then they can put those tools to use to create their own art pieces and then um, I this is Brian again I created the audio workshop um, which I won't go too in depth about but basically it was just using um, Audacity, which is a sort of open source free program that you can download online for doing some audio recording and editing. It's a pretty comprehensive program, I will say. Um, and so sort of like Virginia, you can see in the bottom right, I created a series of videos that we posted to our group YouTube account, covering everything from um, just introducing the project, which is this sort of awkward image of me waving um, that video is just to introduce the audio section, but also covering everything from downloading all the way down to editing and adding effects to your audio piece. And ultimately, the idea here was for people to create some sort of um, reflective um, audio creation, whether that was a spoken word recording, a, you know, a poem reading, just like an audio journal of you know, how they were feeling, their response to a certain question, or you know, a music piece if they wanted to get really innovative. Um, and you can see there's a picture of the curriculum on the left hand, left hand side, excuse me, and on the upper right hand is a picture of Audacity and sort of what, um, what would end up being created at the end of, of the workshop. 
So that's our project. This project will live indefinitely on the Google Drive. So if you know any folks that could use this resource or if you yourself want to participate, you can go to this URL and you could be one of the first people to submit a piece of art to our gallery. Uh, but thank you. And are there any questions? So again, you have any questions, uh, type it into the chat and we'll ask your question in the group. Uh, so Lisa Rose, I should have signed up for your workshops. Have you had participants yet? Well, Lisa, you can still sign up. There's really no sign up process. It's kind of just go to the Google Drive and you can just start going through the workshops. And then after you're done, if you feel comfortable, you can send it to us to put in our gallery. As far as if we had any participants yet, um, I mean, not that we're aware of, like no one has submitted their art piece to our gallery. But I mean, there's no real way for us to like track if someone has actually gone through the material. Uh, Arian wrote, she would love to try it out uh, maybe next week as long as the links are supplied. And it sounds like they are through the blog. Is that right, Virginia? Sorry, what was your question? Uh, Arian was just saying maybe I can, she can try this out like next week as long as the links are supplied. Yes, we'll yeah. make sure links are supplied. Great. Yeah, the project itself, the link is right here. It's just tinyurl.com slash WTLB2020. Um, but yeah, we can always send that link to you, of course. And I just put it in the chat in case anyone is interested okay. in taking a look at it during the break or anything. All right, uh, we'll go with one last question from Katie Ward. You know, what was the most challenging part to adapt? There were quite a few challenges we hit. I think the hardest thing was finding ways to actually, um, I would say my, my perspective on this is that I think the hardest part was just finding ways to create some sense of interaction and give like a personality to the project. Um, which is why I think Charlotte mentioned we had a couple of these virtual info sessions for people to attend and we were hoping that would sort of help um, put our faces to the project and you know give some humanized aspect to it as opposed to like here's this Google Drive with all this information for you to look at. Um, so I would say that was the hardest part of not being able to do all these um, you know the in-person workshops and, and have that you know one-on-one -on -one interaction with people.